I have a dream that a teacher will see every student on the first day of school as one with limitless potential, regardless of their clothes, their gender, or the color of their skin. I have a dream that students will see the same for themselves, never settling for the mediocre. I have a dream that students see classrooms as their opportunity to reach greatness and not as an obstacle they need to overcome. I have a dream that past failures simply inspire more effort and don't discourage it. I have a dream that we all stop finding excuses for why we can't succeed and instead find the courage to ensure we do. Dear Dr. King, I know how to keep your dream alive and your 50th anniversary too. We can help more people be nice. We can help people if they are hurt. We can help people be safer and have equal rights. I will make a speech to the world like you. I will go everywhere and make this speech. I will help people in my school be a better person by telling them what is right and what is wrong. I learn about you in school and that makes me feel powerful of helping others. Someday I might be like you. Sincerely, Mason Fricky. will be able to attend school. I have a dream that one day, one of my students will find a cure for cancer. I have a dream that every child who walks through my classroom doors knows that I believe they can be anything they want to be and can do anything they want to do. I have a dream that every child will have equal access to technology so they can be the best 21st century learners possible. Querido Martin Luther King Jr., tú has vivido muchas injusticias durante muchos años para darte cuenta que tenías que cambiar las cosas. Tú eres el único que pudiste unir a los blancos y a la gente de color. Tú luchaste para cambiar todo y que se pudieran no ser amigos porque habían vivido separados. Yo voy a seguir tu ejemplo, tus palabras y tu sueño para que tu sueño siga viviendo. Yo voy a seguir tus pasos y seguir tu voz. Yo voy a ayudar a la gente para que haga su sueño realidad. Yo voy a ayudar a la gente a leer, a escribir para que se crean en ellos mismos y se gradúen. Todos vamos a lograr nuestros sueños si seguimos tu ejemplo. Con cariño y admiración, Laura Valdés. Nancy Humphrey and as president of the Plano ISD Board of Trustees, it is my honor on behalf of my fellow trustees to welcome you to this community celebration and tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm especially proud of this event and the way that it highlights our Plano ISD students. I want to thank all of the students who have helped us create this amazing program. You were greeted as you walked through the door with an energetic performance by Plano Senior High School's Percussion Ensemble, and direct, which is directed by Mitchell Hernandez. Please join me in giving these talented students a round of applause. August 2013 marked the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's inspirational I Have a Dream speech. And as we celebrate that milestone, we remember another prominent figure in American history and the civil rights movement. 2013 also marked the 50th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination, not very far from here in Dallas, Texas. We remember both men whose impact on our country and the world resonates with us today. Both have been considered great men of courage and wisdom who promoted equality and peace. Both men worked hard to put their beliefs in action, and both men inspired an entire nation with their powerful words. In December 2013, the world paused to honor another 
leader, former South African President Nelson Mandela, who passed away on December 5th. Mr. Mandela's presidency was, itself, the fulfillment of Dr. King's dream, a landmark in the global structure to overcome racial inequality. As we celebrate and remember these inspirational leaders, I am pleased to highlight our district and community leaders who are with us tonight. First, I'd like to introduce my colleagues, the Plano ISD Board of Trustees. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all have been recognized. They are School Board Vice President David Stolle, Secretary Mike Friedman, Trustee Missy Bender, and um, Carolyn Mobius, Tammy Richards, and Marilyn Hinton are unable to attend this evening and they send their regrets. Please join me in applauding my fellow trustees. Also joining us from the city of Plano is City Councilman Pat Miner. Please, please stand so we can recognize you. <laughs> and also another very important person representing the Plano ISD Council of PTAs joining, joining us tonight is Denise Burke. Denise, will you please stand? <laughs> Thank you. Plano ISD is so fortunate to have outstanding district leadership under the direction of Superintendent Richard Matkin. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Matkin. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to personally thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, I think all of you recognize that this is a true community collaboration with district administrators, staff, students, parents, and community leaders. And it's uh, so rewarding to see uh, so many principals here who are our true leadership at the campus level. Uh, I want to re also recognize a group of people that do the heavy lifting for me that are, are my leadership team. And I'd ask them to stand and remain standing uh, till all are introduced. I'd like to first recognize Steve Fortenberry, Associate Superintendent for Business and Facility Services. Dr. Kathy Galloway, Associate Superintendent for District Services. Patty Meyer, Associate Superintendent for Campus Services. And Carla Oliver, Assistant Superintendent for Government, Community, and Planning Initiatives. If we could give them a round of applause. And now it's my pleasure to uh, recognize the true superstar of this event. This event wouldn't be possible without the work of a bunch of team members who collaborated with the community and campuses and who worked with our esteemed Dr. Myrtle Hightower on the planning committee. Dr. Hightower has served as a chairperson for this event for many years and we appreciate her leadership at this event and throughout the community. And if you've ever been in a meeting with Dr. Hightower, she is a taskmaster. She's attention to details. She wants input from every single member of the committee. And she's just an amazing individual who has uh, helped us organize and keep this event going. And I want to, you to welcome her, our current Citizen of the Year, Dr. Myrtle Hightower. I would also like to thank all who served with Dr. Hightower on this year's planning committee. Would members of the MLK planning committee please stand so that we may recognize you. Back. And now I would like to welcome the Plano East Panther Battalion under the leadership of Command Sergeant Major Michael Franklin for the posting of the colors. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance.
diligence in action. Good evening, I'm Lynn Ojeda, principal of Williams High School. It is an honor for us to once again host the district celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Tonight's program commemorates the 50 years since Dr. King delivered his powerful I Have a Dream speech, and it celebrates the diversity in our school district and community. At a celebration such as this, I'm reminded that our work as a community leader and as educators help put Dr. King's dream into action. This year, Williams High School uh, has launched an initiative called Graduation Mindset, which focuses on helping students overcome obstacles so that they may achieve their goals and dreams. Thanks to leaders like Dr. King, our students' goals and dreams are within reach. The students participating in tonight's program are taking you on a musical journey through the decades. We started in 2011 with Wave and Flag, performed by Plano Senior High School's Percussion Ensemble. Next, Williams High School's Total Harmony will perform a song from the 1990s, Seasons of Love, directed by Ann Rombagnolo. Later, we will visit the 1980s with a performance of We Are the World by Plano Children's Chorale, directed by Virginia Asiatico and Christy Berkeley. The Robinson Middle School Razzmatazz, directed by Kimberly Ahrens, will take us to the 70s with Sam Cooke's What a Wonderful World. We then head back to the 1960s when Dr. King delivered his famous speech where we will get a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T from Williams High School's Fusion. These groups will combine to sing Free at Last, a spiritual from the 1950s. I invite you to go on this musical journey, hearing the words of Dr. King along the way and hearing from our elementary students who've prepared letters to Dr. King. Please join me in welcoming Total Harmony. Five hundred twenty. 
have no despair about the future. I have no fear about the outcome of our struggle in Birmingham and all over the nation because the goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up with the destiny of America. Before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before the pen of Jefferson scratched across the pages of history, we were here. For more than two centuries, our poor parents labored here without wages. They made cotton king, and they built the homes of their masters in the midst of brutal injustice and shameful humiliation. And yet, out of the bottomless vitality, our people continue to thrive and develop. If the inexpressible cruelties of slavery could not stop us, then the opposition we now face will surely fail. We will win our freedom because the sacred heritage of our nation and the eternal will of God are embodied in our echoing demands. Dear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I want to thank you for all you have done for this country. I must say your I Had a Dream speech really changed the world. I bet you didn't know this at the time, but when you were doing all the things you did to stop segregation, you didn't only change the thoughts of the people who were present, but you changed the thoughts of the whole world. I would like to help your dream live on. Here are some things I can do to help out. I can treat everyone with the respect they each deserve. I can be kind and fair to everyone I encounter, no matter their race or color. I can also help my community by making sure that people don't judge anyone by what they look like. Do you know what don't judge a book by its cover means? Well, it means not to judge people or things by the way they look. You, my friend, have done an excellent job of letting others know the true meaning of that phrase. Your friend, Sophia Flora. I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells, and some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You've been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, Go back to South Carolina, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing that somehow the situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. Dear Martin Luther King Jr., we have been talking about everything you tried to do for our country to make it a better place to live for all people. We can still forge our dream from 50 years ago. There are things that we can do, do today to help others. To further our dream, I can use my time creatively by serving others who do not have all the advantages that I have. He once said that courage faces fear and thereby masters it. That means it takes courage to stand up and do what is right. Sometimes at school I see friends who are not kind to others and I have tried to stand up to this kind of bullying, even if it means that my friends won't like me for doing it. This is one way to help at peace at home and school. At school, we have been talking about why the pilgrims came to our country in the first place. We have talked about how they wanted to be able, be able to have the freedom to worship like they wanted to. Our country is a melting pot for all people around the world. That means that once we're here, we all have the same rights to happiness. This is a place where we should all be able to be safe and belong and be happy. I wish that kids, all kids could be, feel safe and secure like we all at my school. At our school, we have kids from many different countries. And we all get along because we try to respect each other, even if we have different religions and celebrate different holidays. Maybe if we celebrate how we are all special and unique, like we do in my school, there will be more tolerance and less fighting. And that, Dr. King, is why I think your dream will continue, because kids like me will help you. We all belong here, just like the pilgrims did. Thank you, Dr. King, for trying to trace the laws to be fair for all people. Thank you for helping to make this country a place where we can all belong. Sincerely, Dylan Nelson.
As you can see from the video we just watched, this year's MLK Art Contest was very competitive and yielded some really beautiful artwork. I am pleased to introduce our contest finalist. This year's contest is sponsored by Capital One in conjunction with the Plano ISD Education Foundation. <laughs> Winners, as I call your name, Please come to the stage where our Teachers of the Year, Rami Mahmood and Aaron Swain, will greet you. There you are. All right. In the first place elementary division, we have Lindsay Zhang with Matthews Elementary. In the first place of the middle school division, I have Ellie Ruan with Schimmelfinnig Middle School. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, the first place in the high school division, Julia Patterson with Vines High School. Please join me in applauding these outstanding student artists. <laughs> thank you to the students. And again, thank you to Capital One for your generous sponsorship. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The urge for freedom will eventually come. This is what has happened to the American Negro. Something within has reminded him of his birthright of freedom. Something without that has reminded him that he can gain it. So I have not said to my people, get rid of your discontent. But I have tried to say that this normal and healthy discontent can be channeled through the creative outlet of nonviolent direct action. Now this approach is being dismissed as extremist. I must admit that I was initially disappointed in being so categorized. But as I continue to think about the matter, I gradually gained a bit of satisfaction for being considered an extremist. Was not Amos an extremist for justice? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Was not Martin Luther an extremist? Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. Was not John Bunyan an extremist? I will stay in jail to the end of my time before I make a mockery of my conscience. Was not Abraham Lincoln an extremist? This nation cannot survive half slave and half free. Was not Thomas Jefferson an extremist? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men were created equal. So the question is not whether we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists we will be. Will we be extremists for hate, or will we be extremists for love? Will we be extremists for the preservation of justice, or will we be extremists for the cause of injustice? Dear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., without your vision, the world today would be so different. My friends would be different. Some of my friends are African American, some are Asian, some are Hispanic, and some are Indian. To me, that is amazing. 50 years later, your dreams are still alive. 
Your dream has changed the world, but sadly, in some places, people are still treated unequally. There are millions of East African children who are unlikely to receive an education because they are too poor and don't get a chance to go to school. It truly does break my heart when I learn things like this. Your message and your dream live on today, not just in my community, but the rest of the world as well. I think we can make the world better by using social media. Spread the word. Tell people all over the world to help. Imagine not living in your house. Imagine not ever getting a chance to earn money just because you're born poor. I know it's hard to imagine because you and I are very fortunate to live in America, but trust me, others are not as blessed as we are. I am Jewish, and I know it's hard. It's not easy having people talk about Easter and Christmas when I have never celebrated those holidays before. A long time ago, but still today, people were killed just for being Jewish. When you look at a new student or someone you haven't met, do you look at the color of their eyes or if their hair is straight or curly? Do you look at the color of their braces or their shirt they're wearing? No, not really, do you? We usually judge people by their character and their personality. We see if they are honest, caring, kind, respectful, and so much more. It was a very daring thing you did. You sacrificed your life for speaking up for people. By the time I grow up, I hope more and more people can have a great life like mine, because trust me, we do have it good. If you were still alive today, I would have loved to have met you. I will remember your words, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I will never give up, I will keep moving forward, and never stop trying to do the right thing. Yours truly, Emily Cornman. We have come to this hollowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now this is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is corrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come to cast a check. A check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. Dear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., your famous speech, I Have a Dream, helped us make peace for our nation. The things you have done made a better life for us. You didn't give up on telling people to be friends and make peace for our world. We are learning lots of great facts about your life. When you were just a child, you were not allowed to play with your friends. The people were separated and didn't get to hang out in a white area because they were colored. They could not eat, play, or hang out with each other. Because of the choices you made, I can grow up and play with whoever I like. When you didn't give up on your dream, it makes me not give up on my dreams. I can make the world a better place by helping our earth be clean and help people who are in need. If a boy is bullying me, I will not listen to him, and I can stand up for people who are being bullied. That happens in high school and middle school. I'm a free person and we won't be separated. We will live in world peace and I will pass it on with my dreams. Lots of thanks, Denise Gadoski.
Since we've come to our nation's capital to cast a check, when the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise to all men, yes, black men as well as white men, that they would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. Querido Martin Luther King, gracias por hacerme parte de tu sueño. Tu sueño me hace sentir libre. Cuando un niño nuevo llega a la escuela, yo lo trato con respeto. Tengo las mismas oportunidades en la escuela porque mi maestra tiene libros para todos. 
Yo te ayudo con tu sueño porque yo respeto a mi hermana para que ella me trate bien. También se está cumpliendo tu sueño porque yo resido en la vecindad. Yo no quiero que el mundo tenga mucha basura. Me gustaría ayudar a los pobres con ropa y comida. Yo también tengo un sueño como tú. Mi sueño es ser ilustradora de libros. Me gustaría que los niños vieran mis libros. Yo tengo el mismo sueño que tú. Con amor, Alexa. While confined here in a Birmingham city jail, I came across your recent statement calling our present activities unwise and untimely. I would like to answer your statement in what I hope will be patient and reasonable terms. I think I should give the reason for my being in Birmingham since you have been influenced by the argument of outsiders coming in. Several months ago, our local affiliate here in Birmingham invited us to be on call to engage in a nonviolent direct action program if such were deemed necessary. We readily consented, and when the hour came, we lived up to our promises. So I am here, along with several members of my staff, because we were invited here. Beyond this, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. Moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and state. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow provincial outside agitator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider. Dear Dr. King, as a curious fourth grader, I have learned about important leaders who made changes to our world, and you are one of them. I want to thank you for ending segregation and for persuading people to know that skin color means nothing, and all that matters is how you are on the inside. Surprisingly, you are very lucky that five decades of your crucial dream came true, and obviously still lasts. Although 50 years of your dream lasted, the work yet still isn't finished. I want to belong to the group that still wants to continue your lovely dream. And what am I going to do to continue it? I want to be a perfect role model for my younger sibling. I will also not laugh at other people's dreams. Instead, I will continue and encourage their dreams. I want to encourage people to have dreams, not to stop dreaming. Teamwork helps, and so it is treating people equally and fairly. I even know a quote you said with your own mouth. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. To me, this means to not stand back and be quiet. Get into the conversation and speak. Your dream is as important as oxygen, and oxygen is important to live. You taught me to never stop dreaming. So today, I'm going to continue your brilliant dream. Thanks once again for making equal rights and turning the world upside down. Sincerely, Simona Carnala, thank you.
Good evening. I'm Ali Gawani, Chairman of Plano ISD's Diversity Advisory Committee, DAC. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm so impressed by the student performances we have seen this evening. Your tribute to Dr. King has been very moving to all of us. And in that spirit, I am pleased to help recognize several community members who embody the spirit of Dr. King's dream. Congratulations to all our nominees. This award is coordinated annually by the Diversity Advisory Committee to honor students, staff, and community members whose actions honor the work and ideals of Dr. King. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Our 2014 Diversity Leadership Award nominees are Sarah Browdy, Carpenter Middle School, Derek Brookins, Planer Senior High School, Monique Williams, Huffman Elementary School, Jamie Zellner, Shepton High School, Samir Amos, Plano Senior High School student, Haggard Middle School Students Hope Program and Partners PE, and the Plano International Festival. The nominees may be seated. To announce our winners, let's hear from some eager young friends from Beatty Early Childhood School. Everybody listen up, this is serious business. The leadership award goes to Derek Brookins. Yeah! The student award goes to Samir Amos. Good job. The community award goes to the Play on Lasso Festival. Present and Pack of Wool goes to Mr. James Thomas, the nicest man in the world. Good job! The special impact award goes to You too, Sherrod. Kara Mason. I extend my sincere congratulations to all of our Diversity Leadership Award nominees and winners. As I call the names of the winners, I invite you to come to the lower platform to receive your award from Audrey Daniel of the Plano ISD Human Resources Department. For more than a decade, the, leader the Diversity Leadership Award recipient, Derek Brookins, has used the universal language of music as a choral director for Plano ISD, demonstrating strength through diversity. For years, Mr. Brookins has stood by the theme that a performing group is a reflection of our society. Mr. Brookins has produced and directed more than 45 concerts in Plano ISD using the multicultural theme that celebrates the diversity of our students and in our community, demonstrating a more poignant meaning of the word harmony. As a recipient of the Diversity Student Leadership Award, Samir Amos is already an active community member. Mr. Amos takes an interfaith approach to bringing communities together for the greater good. Mr. Amos possesses a real sense of responsibility for his community's welfare, a quality that is particularly outstanding in a person so young. Involved in many community service and outreach projects, Mr. Amos is involved at the Islamic Association of Collin County. At IACC, Samir is also a member of the youth community, 
in which he is in charge of creating programs and representing IACC at various community events. Accepting on Samir's behalf is the principal, Sarah Watkins. Since 2005, the Diversity Community Leadership Award winner, the Plano International Festival, has been promoting and celebrating the many cultures represented by the people in the Plano community. The festival was designed to educate, enlighten, and enrich the multicultural experiences of all Plano residents, promoting awareness of cultural diversity and facilitating communications between all cultural groups. Now, in its ninth year, the Plano International Festival showcases more than 100 cultural groups through various activities. Tonight, we are also presenting two special community impact awards selected by the Diversity Advisory Committee. Please welcome Kara Mendelson, Collin County Homeless Coalition President, and James L. Thomas III, Student Service Coordinator and District Homeless Liaison. Congratulations to you, both for your work raising awareness and educating the community at large to the plight of the silent minority in our community. Through your efforts, our schools, neighborhoods, communities, churches, synagogues, temples, and mosques have branded together in an effort to bridge the gap between homelessness and opportunity. Thank you. As we prepare to welcome our next guests, I extend a special thank you to all of our student performers who, through mu uh, music and spoken word, have provided us with an amazing soundtrack to underscore the life and work of Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I am honored to introduce tonight's special guest, stage and film actress, Mrs. Irma P. Hall. Mrs. Hall is best known for her roles in such films as Book of Numbers, Soul Food, Beloved and the Lady Killers. As an educator, I am most excited that Ms. Hall taught English in foreign languages in Dallas for 27 years. We are in for a treat as Mrs. Hall joins us tonight to share some of her original poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mrs. Irma P. Hall. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I'm especially happy to be here because it's like coming home. Since I lived here in Plano on Avenue G uh, from 1958 to 1964, I believe. And um, Plano has a uh, a lot to do with um, with what I do now. I had uh, I love children and uh, I love art and I like to play. I never grew up yet, and um, I had a group of kids, I just neighborhood kids, and we got together and formed a little art group, and we would go and find things and come back to my house, and then we'd make things, and um, I think I had. Uh, one uh, case, a little set of, of watercolors and some crayons and things, and we did a lot of little artwork. And yeah, this we're talking about in the 50s now. So, and I went up to the mayor's office and told him that these children had done this work and I would like some way or another to display it. And uh, there was a space um, above... Um, I think it was a furniture store downtown. 
<laughs> I'm laughing about downtown. I think that was a furniture store, a grocery store, a bank, insurance office, two or three other buildings. That was downtown. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, we, we did that. And then um, I, when, um, when the schools integrated, I um, volunteered to tutor young people who were going to go to school. I said, I can do it in the arts, since I majored in French and mine in Spanish, and, and uh, I love history, and I know about literature and the arts. Um, I do what I can when it comes to mathematics and the sciences. <laughs> and the parents were so sweet. We got together, and we would take a carload of kids we used Fair Park in Dallas as a resource place. So we'd go over there because they had all these wonderful art museum, aquarium, uh, everything that we needed over there. And uh, the kids felt very comfortable. Uh, integration was no problem here. They was, uh, the, that was the only thing. They wanted to make sure that they felt comfortable that any gaps that they may have when they went to school, because it was something like a big sister, big brother program or something like that here, so there was no problems there. And uh, um, I always felt very much at home, and Plano was always cosmopolitan, and it fitted in with the way I have been blessed all my life. I was born to a jazz musician from Louisiana, from Shreveport, and um, uh, a mother who was working private home at the time, whose family came from South Louisiana, and um, I think God arranged that they both <laughs> went to Tyler, Texas, at, at at different times, so they could meet, so they could have me. <laughs> and they had, they took very seriously their charge of raising me, and. Uh, as long as I can remember, right back when I was three or four years old, I was always told that it was their job to prepare me to live in a global society. I remember I had no idea what that was. But from the age of seven to 16, when I finished high school, I lived in Chicago, Illinois. And um, there again, it was always stressed. The, the reason they liked Chicago, because there was so much diversity, so many different kind of people. I used to collect uh, newspapers on the L, the streetcars, and some of them you read left to right, right to left, up and down, and I'd take them home and I'd stare at them and stare at them, thinking if I looked at them long enough, I guess I could translate them. <laughs> And then I, uh, I met a, a Tamale man, and I, um, I was speaking something called Pachuco <laughs> at the time, and uh, he told me that that was not Spanish, and asked me if I wanted to learn Spanish, and I said, yes. So every day I'd stop by the Tamale stand, he'd teach me a little more. By the time I got to high school, I was quite fluent. And um, I, in, in college, I decided the, to major in French and Spanish, not to teach. I never thought about teaching. It was the furthest thing from my mind. I wanted to work as a buyer for a store where I could travel all over the world. But, you know, once again, God said teach. So when I, when I was doing my student teaching and I saw that light go on in the eyes of, of some young people, and I said, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do the rest of my life. And um, I have been blessed that that is what I continue to do. I just continue to do it in a different way. And I have uh, an abundance of blessings in the arts. So I play piano. Um, I write. I've been writing since I was a small child, about seven, eight years old. And I met Gwendolyn Brooks and Langston Hughes, who encouraged me to write and I just write my thoughts. Most of the time, I have uh, been writing, as a child I wrote little, little poems about, oh, wondering about 
uh, the nature and why it was like it was. Then in the, um, during the civil rights struggle, I wrote lots of poems to encourage my people. Um, my parents raised me, as I said, to live in a global society and to know that we are all here to help each other. So I never had tunnel vision. I have always been extremely proud of being an American of African descent. I've always known that I was and I've been proud of that. But since there are people of various ethnicities in my family and as far as friends go, I never could have the tunnel vision. There were some nice people and some not nice people, and that's all. But I, I wrote a lot of poems to uplift and to encourage my people. And I would like to share one with you tonight that I wrote called My People's Beauty. <laughs> I'll be 79 in June, so I have to have glasses to see. <laughs> Black babies with eyes that shine, mothers that watch with care all the time, sharing their love with their own and with others. How many folk have shared our black mothers? And this is the beauty of my people. Little black children who laugh, run, and play, all slicked up on Sundays to learn and to pray. Black boys playing on all kinds of teams, setting new records almost daily, it seems. And this is the beauty of my people. Black artisans, craftsmen, farmers too, bus boys, junkmen, airmen in blue, teachers, doctors, preachers, and all, businessmen, statesmen with wisdom of Saul. And this is the beauty of my people. Afros, cornrows, shiny ball domes, in fashions that range from Harlem to Rome, from projects, mansions, one-room shacks, corn toads, shivers, and Cadillacs, steaks, french fries, hot links, and sacks. And this is the beauty of my people. Living and loving through sadness and strife, laughing or blue, steady dealing with life. Every month, a brand new dap. On the corners, brothers rap. And this is the beauty of my people. Grandmas in rocking chairs taking naps. Young black babies on grandpa's laps. Chewing tobacco, dipping snuff, big cigars and diamond cuffs. And this is the beauty of my people. Plowing the fields in the hot sunlight. Loving and giving in the soft dark night. Storefront gospel and back alley blues. Chitlins, collard, and pot liquor too. And this is the beauty of my people. Long, lonely nights with nothing to do. High yellow, brown skin, black in all hues. Living today, forgiving the past. Burning with hope to be free at last. And this is the beauty of my people. And through it all, there is the beat from the town of LA to the Congo's heat, from back before Moses down to today. It keeps on keeping on in its own special way. And this is the beauty of my people. And I would like to leave you with something. We are, are charged. We are charged to help one another. This country was founded by poor people, and they all helped each other to get where we are. We are a very, very young country. I'm a part of history. When I was born, it was just 70 years after slavery, so I knew slaves, or people who had been slaves. I also knew that we had had friends on all levels. And I knew that this country was built 
to serve as a beacon for the whole world to see how democracy is really supposed to work. Unless we forget how we came to this land, each one alone, yet tied by the poorness of our hands, defrocked, dethroned, distressed, kings, chieftains, princesses, warriors, workers, wives, detached from all save our very lives. But even in our darkest hour, even lying in filth and decay and raw death, the wise men said, we must love one another. We must love one another. We must love one another. So let us do what we do best, and God will handle all the rest. Let us love one another. Let us love one another. Let us love one another. I love you, and I thank you. One day, the South will recognize its real heroes. They will be the James Merediths, courageously and with a majestic sense of purpose, facing jeering and hostile mobs and the agonizing loneliness that characterizes the life of a pioneer. They will be old, oppressed, battered Negro women, symbolized in a 72-year-old woman of Montgomery, Alabama, who rose up with a sense of dignity and with her people decided not to ride the segregated buses and responded to one who inquired about her tiredness with ungrammatical profundity. My feet is tired, but my soul is rested. They will be young high school and college students, young ministers of the gospel, and a host of their elders courageously and nonviolently sitting in at lunch counters and willingly going to jail for consciousness' sake. One day the South will know that when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for the best in the American dream and the most sacred values in our Judeo-Christian heritage. Thank you.
a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. And this is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out the mountain of despair, a hope of stone. With this faith, we will be able to transform a jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. And this will be the day that all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightened Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-covered Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and every mohill of Mississippi, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every city and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.
Before we welcome our final performance, I would like to thank all of you for being here tonight. I thank the community members and district leaders who helped plan the event, and I extend a special thank you to Dr. Myrtle Hightower. We have talked a lot about Dr. King's dream this evening, but I'd like to add that it is Dr. Hightower's dream that keeps this event going year after year. Please join me for one more round of applause for Dr. Hightower and her committee. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more treat in store for you before we dismiss this evening. Please be sure to take a look at the MLK display art as you exit tonight. And now please welcome the Plano Children's Choral performing Sia Humba. Marching in the light. 